This has probably been the most lame hype towards UNC Duke that we've seen in a long time. Both teams are unranked. Both teams are having rough seasons. Are we even excited about Saturday's matchup, or does everyone realize that Carolina is going to play a big against Duke? Matter of fact, let's talk about all of the games and who desperately needs a conference win when it's all said and done. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked on ACC. I'm your host, Candace Cooper, joined by Jersey Dick from Locked on Seminoles. And as we mentioned, it is rivalry weekend for a couple of our big time teams. They'll face off and it feels a little lackluster than usual. But we'll talk about why that could be as well as some teams that desperately need wins. Jersey Drake, how are you feeling? I feel good. I feel good, but I don't feel as good as the Louisville Cardinals who finally got their first <laughs> HC win. So shout out to them boys over there. It's been a long time coming. Didn't know if Kenny Payne was going to make it through the season. Still don't know if he's going to make it through the season, but it certainly is money we'll put our bets on. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. And if we had our money on this weekend and everything going down, the first game, of course, we had to talk to talk about is arguably the biggest rivalry in sports North Carolina and Duke facing off at 8.30 p.m. on ESPN. And I'm hyping it up. I'm giving you all of the jazz and the bells and whistles. And it feels like it's not going to be any of that. <laughs> it's going to be a <laughs> battle of two teams just trying to make it out. I mean, overall, I mean, it's you kind of put it point, point blank in the intro where is it, it's just two teams that had a lot of hopes, a lot of aspirations hanging into the season, especially with Hubert Davis coming off a year in which he was one game away from winning a national championship in his first year, and also all the higher places with him. And then you have John Shire, the new head coach from Duke, the kind of the heir apparent, the hand-picked, you know, favorite son, who I don't know if struggling is the right, right word, but I think it's probably better me to failing to meet the standard that has set by Professor Makhachevsky. And also, like I said before, you don't hear that much rumbling with his job security, but you hear a lot about it for, you know, Hubert Davis last season. But, hey, that's just me. But it is kind of interesting how both teams are going to be unranked. I think right now from advanced metrics, Duke is going to be favored by five points. But – Quite frankly, I mean, I like North Carolina a lot more, better in this game personally. Well, a lot of people are giving Duke like 70% chance to win over North Carolina, 30%. I want to touch on, you know, a couple things that you said. I mean, at the end mm-hmm. of the day, this is two teams that are, what, 16 and 6, 15 and 7. They're not meeting expectations and standards of what has been before them, you know, in previous years. But I think the biggest issue is like team synergy. I think this is the first year that I've seen both teams just like no real identity. We don't have like a Filipowski, sure, you could argue he's a leader. Baycott, sure, you could argue mm-hmm. he's a leader. But when they go out, it's like, who's stepping in? Who are the pips? Who are the, who are the guys that are like, all right, don't worry about it, bud. I'm going to light this up and have you know an incredible game. Caleb Love, you know, shooting in, shooting out. When it, he shoots. We know that. That is he shoots <laughs> accuracy. <laughs> Does he shoot when he needs to? That could be argued. But he shoots. R.J. Davis, up and down. Pete Nance, he's not Brady Manic. It's hard to be the grad that comes after Brady, after all that he's done. And then for Duke, I mean, Drake Whitehead is hurt. You got Lively, who's up and down. Jeremy Roach, who when he's in the game, he's a difference maker, but he's been hurt. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, there's just nobody that I you know, jump for joy about. No, I mean, no, there isn't. Armando Baycott, I mean, that's like that's been my boy for, what, two seasons after you correct me to say his name. The pop work, I say Armando uh, Baycott, I thought, I don't know, I thought it was a different pronunciation, but no, he's definitely someone that he needed to step up when Brady Mack did leave his Brady Mack. I think a lot of people forget that he did the little, all the little things correctly right, and then him losing him and towards the end of the uh, tournament last season was definitely kind of a uh, kind of an issue for the UNC Tar Heels. But with this Duke team, I personally think North Carolina is more of a complete team overall because if you look at their records, Duke is 16-6, uh, and six, and UNC is 15-7. But if you look at the where those losses are compiled, UNC had that horrible stretch of losing, I think, what, four games mm-hmm. in a row, I think it was. Mm-hmm. But Duke's game, these their losses overall have been to teams like a Wake Forest. And to say who was good this season, but they're not great. Clemson could be argued as one of the best teams in the conference, and maybe mm-hmm. is the best team in the conference, but then also to a Virginia Tech. So it seems like to me that 
the losses between the two overall heavily are, are more in favor of, North, of a UNC team. And it yeah. could be evident be, because this is John Shire's first season. But, again, I don't care if it's your first season. You're, you're at Duke. You have a standard to uphold. You're not doing that right now. A thousand percent. And what you touched on about Shire and his job not being in jeopardy. And I just, it's very much more give him time versus Hubert was just not the guy. I mean, we could just polar, polar opposites of in terms of how they have been talked about and all of the things. So interesting to see how it'll play out. But if you were to give your prediction right now, if you were a betting person, your FanDuel sports book, you have all the things. Who are you rooting for and going to pick? Uh, as always, folks, I do usually say with, you know, these lines aren't come up till the morning of. However, I've, I've always said before, we don't know what these teams are until the end of January, early February. Well, folks, it's the first week of February. So we can now <laughs> use the line by the famous late coach, Dan Green. They are who we thought they were. And we will not let Duke off the hook. Give me UNC to cover the spread at least up to plus four and a half. Ooh, we, I don't know. And but... spend the money line right there real quick. Just <laughs> Love that. There are other rivals who are taking the court um, this Saturday. And I think it's really a fun opportunity to get to talk about a couple of these. Virginia and Virginia Tech will start our Saturday slate at noon on ESPN2. We know Virginia Tech is looking to get that lick back after going to Charlottesville, t- holding that L. Now they want to say, come, all right, come on down to uh, Blacksburg and see if it, things don't turn out different. This Virginia team is vulnerable. It was a little shaky, you know, against a couple of their past opponents, but they've been able to pull out wins. Can they keep this up against a Virginia Tech team who's been known to get a little upsets under their belt? But with this Virginia Tech team, though, if you look at their overall schedule, how do you go from losing seven games in a row – Mm-hmm. To them beating Duke, which is also like Duke, like that's kind of what we mentioned in the last segment. Also being Syracuse, but then you could lose by nine to Miami. And you know, I'm a big I'm Isaiah Wong fan. I do think that this Miami team is probably the one. It's still one of the more criminal underrated teams in the country. And then with Virginia, I mean, like you're saying before, like they're on a I think right now a nine ten game win streak. But like you're saying, this is a rivalry game. You kind of have to throw records out the window overall with this. And right now, for my own advanced metrics, right, Virginia Tech, this is a picking game. And quite mm-hmm. frankly, the numbers suggest it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. So to me, this is a steer clear kind of game for me. So I'll probably just more enjoy this, you know, with having a little bit of an extra brunch around noon, you know, you know putting the TV on real quick. <laughs> but uh, give me Virginia Tech to win this game. Yeah. What I Virginia Tech, you said? I did say Virginia Tech. Okay. Well, I'm going to say Virginia only because every game, damn near, there's somebody that becomes a superstar. Armand Franklin, mm-hmm. you got your boy uh, Beekman, who can play, you know, really sound defense. Kihei Clark is finally starting to figure it out. You got Vanderplas and all the mm-hmm. things. I'm like, well, damn, pick, pick a struggle. Can somebody fight back? But you don't even know who's about I, to listen, sound all off. I'm, say- I'm saying Hunter Couture and Sean Padula, <laughs> my two boys over there are going to be handling getting it done real quick. No, Couture, when he played Duke, I said he either got all the ladies in the house for him tonight or whatever he got going on <laughs> My boy was balling. <laughs> My boy shot everything out the gym. I said, I don't know what he lady. D- he does that randomly. It's just, it's just like he just does not miss. I was like, who? It's like, it's like I don't know. It's like, it's like you know, the new tweet that's going around is that what I'm him performance going on right now. I'm like, there it was for Hunter. Hunter's this might it. be this might be a, another I'm him performance from uh, Couture when it's all said done. So we'll talk about that L- next game up. Wake Forest and Notre Dame. Wake Forest and Notre Dame are going to be two teams that Wake Forest needs this bounce back game to, you know, level set after that loss against Duke and Notre Dame. is just, let's just get through the season, try to give it our best we can for Coach Bray on his way out. You know, it's just not been what we thought it would be, but there's still still a decent team that's going to need Wake Forest's best. Yeah, and also with this Notre Dame team, it's just like we had not super high expectations for them, but we thought they would actually be performing a lot better than this. Like it's, I don't think they've had a, a win streak above three games in Power Five or even Group Five play since I guess November. And mm-hmm. folks, for those who don't know, basketball season starts in November in college <laughs> basketball, and that's the main issue with it. And then Wake Forest, I mean, you got one of the best head coaches there overall, and you have a player like Tyree Appleby who seriously is just stud. Uh, he's going to be someone of a uh, probably a late round flyer pick for the NBA. I definitely see him playing there uh, for the rest of his career. So to me, with this team, Wake Forest, I think it's easily going to handle this because I think at this point with with Notre Dame and because Coach Mike Bright is leaving, you want to kind of like not limp to the finish line, but you just want to get him there to basically, you know, actually, you know, enjoy the last times you have with him. So for this, Wake Forest is probably going to be favored by around three to four points. You take Wake Forest to cover that because I think yeah. three to four, it's going to be like a, uh, eight, it's going to be like a, not a nice game, but like an eight, nine point one for them, I think. 
A thousand percent. And as we talk through some of these bets, we want to make sure you guys are locked in. We also know that there is a whole Super Bowl going down in a couple of weeks. I don't know if you've been watching the Pro Bowl. Drake, have you been watching the Pro Bowl? No, but I did see that Saquon Barkley got decked in the face with a dodgeball. I'm like, no, you can't be doing that to my man. Still looking for that. It's still looking for that. You can't be hitting him in the face. Come on now. A thousand percent. But if you want to get in on the betting action between the Eagles and the Chiefs, we strongly encourage you guys to download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to three thousand dollars back in bonus bets. Locked on's new sports book partner, sports betting partner is here. FanDuel is a very easy and safe way to get in on all of your sports betting action the fan dual sports app sportsbook app say it three times fast it's safe secure and super easy to use best of all you get your paid winning paid your winnings instantly so join FanDuel today at fanduel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on super bowl 57 that's fanduel.com slash locked on college make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports park sportsbook partner of the nfl Whew, man, my glasses are essential, as we can see. All right, we're rocking the ball. <laughs> nice pun. Look at you with the puns the past two days, as you can see the glasses. We're already rough. There you go. Woo. We are rocking and roll with Drizzy Drake of Locked on Seminoles podcast. The fans have been wanting you. I'm trying to tell you. They've been in the YouTube comments like, bring Drizzy Drake back. I swear to God. They were like, we bring Drizzy Drake back because he talks good about Florida State. Y'all are just hating. I was like, ooh, okay. Well, just read us to Phil. So Oof. just so you know, that you got the people feeding for you to give you some of that football content. And speaking of Florida State, they play Let's a go. Louisville team, battle of the bottom. You know, this NC State <laughs> team gave them a judging the other night. Thought it would be competitive. But this is a Florida State team that beat Pitt, who took on in UNC. It's just a cyclical, you got to give your best every night here in the ACC. Louisville's feeling good about themselves. And they know that Florida State's been struggling how do you not get trapped if you're the Seminoles? Um, look to see what you did before. Because if I remember yeah. these two teams actually have met earlier on in the season and Florida State actually handled mm-hmm. them pretty well. Uh, as well as look what you did against Clemson. You you just lost by one point to Clemson. And it's a Florida State team that is starting to feel like a little bit more that they're not giving up, but it's a feeling like they're starting to get some of their players back. And you know, Bob Miller was someone essential that they needed to bring back and everything else, which NCAA, I'm coming after you for that, you know, lack for that suspension because that was not right by y'all, but that's a discussion for a different day. But to me, with this overall, I think it's more important that Florida State kind of commits to their identity of being a defense first team, also overall as well. That's what that's Coach Ham has preached, bringing these kids in overall, even though to me, I think that there's going to be some discussions in the offseason whether or not Coach Ham actually could be here for. Not, I think, past next season, in my personal opinion. Ooh, okay. We're going to see if Cease Warm. We'll see if Coach Payne is right behind him. But I do think that Florida State takes care of business. However, it'll be closer mm-hmm. than people think. Our only two – go ahead. Do you want to say something? No, I was, yeah, no, was going to say Florida State to cover. I, I'm not I'm not taking Louisville. Even though we'll say, they get the one AC one on the belt. All you got to do is once. It's like, you know, we can do this now. Now they know they can do it. I'm so telling you. Know. you. Yeah, you, that's fair. You. That's fair. But, but no, FSU, by, give me my 10. Me, our, our, our only two ranked opponents for – the entire ACC, Miami, will face off against Clemson, a Clemson team that has been playing around with their food a little too long, played the game really sorely, ended up catching an L last week, but, or, excuse me, an L earlier this week against Boston College. Now they have their opportunity to get things back together with against the Hurricanes, a team that they can't play, you know, lightly. I'm sorry, I was pulling up the, I was pulling up the schedule right now real quick for Miami and Clemson, but no, I mean, you're right, Clemson, they – it's a team that, you know, they've, they've been caught playing with their food that gave the Florida State game when I saw the half. I'm like, wait, wait, what's the score real quick? <laughs> Is this the same team that we've been covering all season long? But overall, I mean, right. with Clemson, it's they're still a, a rock solid team. They, they, you know, they need that win over Boston College. Like, it wasn't the prettiest win, but that was something that's like, hey, maybe, you know, get back on their feet. Oh, sorry, they lost to Boston College. My apologies with that. That's actually, oof. Yeah, that's not good either. <laughs> that's ooh, what I'm, I'm saying. They played that that food too long and caught up to them. The Florida State one was close. The Virginia Tech mm-hmm. game was close. It was just like, all right, you buying time. Now you squat the bed. So maybe this might be the question we're at to ask, like, is the team that's – are they kind of sort of fading right now because they actually have had that super hot, hot start. Whereas Miami, I know they haven't they haven't been able to have two back-to-back wins, I think, since the beginning of the year. So for basically one 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 So maybe with this Miami team, they beat about a bad Virginia Tech team. They're probably going to be underdogs to Clemson, but 
you know how I feel about Isaiah Wong. You know how I feel about Jordan Miller. I like Jim Laranega is one of the best coaches actually in the entire country. So to me, Clemson is going to be favored in this game, folks. And you know how much I dislike, you know, Miami. Take Miami to cover this. Take Miami to win this outright if you can. Take an alternative line for Miami to win this game by probably at least up to five points. A hundred percent. Syracuse taking on Boston College, a, te- a game that could go either way. Honestly, if you are looking at you know the way energy that Boston College brings, it's at home, and then Syracuse, an up and down team, and don't know what you're going to get out of them, but they're definitely better than their record shows. No, I mean, and they truly, truly are. And then Boston College is coming off the win against Clemson, which is like Clemson team that hasn't playing with their food, but it still is impressive overall. And this is another going to be a pick 'em game. Per advanced metrics, they have Syracuse as a number 132 team in the country. Boston College is um, 192. So it's you're going to have to ask yourself who's going to step up for either of these teams. Is it going to be Quentin Post for Boston College? Is there a player from Syracuse that can do the same for them? To me with this, it's going to be a pick as well. It's another steer clear for me. But, folks, if you do want to play on this, one, play on FanDuel. Two, play responsibly. And three, take, take uh, Boston College if it's, if it's uh, for, for the money line value. Yeah, absolutely. So those are our Sun Saturday matchups, really good games that are going down. So make sure you check out all of those. And then, like we said, put your money down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't you forget about North Carolina State Georgia Tech? Who? North Carolina State Georgia Tech. Did I what did I forget them? Girl, come on Damn, now. Damn, I really did. I told you I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my bad, Yellow Jackets. My bad, NC State. I really am looking at my spreadsheet. I had, don't have my glasses on because the glare of the ring light is going crazy. But, hey, guys, NC State's playing Georgia Tech at home. It's I think it's, just, it's a gimme game. Well, I say that, and NC State might squad the bed, but I really think that they're going to handle business. But, but, but when was the last time that uh, Georgia Tech won a game? <laughs> I don't know. January 4th against Miami. They are on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight game losing streak right now. And they're losing these games by an average margin of what appears to be about 12 points. And North Carolina State, 30th ranked team in the country per the advanced metrics. They're coming up wins against Notre Dame, Wake Forest, and the shellacking of Florida State. And Florida State has been playing not better ball than Florida Tech, but like similarly kind of like not lackluster, but like eh, kind of mid ball. And this is a similar team. So give me NC State to like, they're going to probably be favored by. 16 points, quite honestly. like it might, might, That might be even more than that, to be honest with the way Georgia Tech's playing right now. And NC State, hopefully they can make uh, PNC Arena rocking because it feels like past couple of games, despite the fact this team is really good, it's been kind of lackluster. But I think DJ Burns is arguably one of the better NC State folks that we've seen in quite some time, especially him being a graduate transfer. He's a great addition. He's embraced the pack love and all the things, and he's just made – NC State basketball fun to watch again on top of Joyner and, you know, Terquavion. So I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to see kind of how they keep rolling and hopefully keep the streak up as they get into tournament play and all the fun things. But don't look too quite ahead because, you know, you got that big NC, or NC State UNC game coming down the pipe here in mid-February. Oh, and I know how you all love to uh, chirp each other on Twitter from what I'm seeing on the timeline. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually oh my excited goodness. to catch that too. Yeah, y'all are – y'all are – I thought MSU about, and UF were bad. <laughs> I know you're talking about y'all, FSU, UF, Miami, all the things. Y'all are like vicious talking about people, mama damn near. Like that's that's the energy that y'all bring off. Just so we're clear. Now you know what? Just listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, yeah, listen, yeah. Listen, sit listen, there, eat listen, your food. Listen. Sit there, eat your mm-hmm, food. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you. You know, you go go to the rest of the show. All right, I'll be right here. <laughs> Quick conversations around the women's game. Everyone who was ranked felt like they understood the assignment, except NC State, who got upset by Georgia Tech, sixty-eight to sixty-two. After coming off the big upset against Notre Dame, you got to have about repeat performances of excellence. Don't know what was going on in the brain, but I sit here and say every night. With women's basketball, you got to bring your best. North Carolina beats Virginia 73 to 62. You have Duke beating Pitt 53 to 44. Another ranked team, Florida State beating Way Forest. Good God, 72 to 44. Notre Dame beats Boston College 72 to 59. Virginia Tech beats Syracuse 78 to 64. And Miami beats Clemson 69 to 66. The only unranked match that we have. (laughs) But I say that to say it is amazing to me. I look at this roster, I look at all the women. Everybody damn near has a ranking. I look at the men and you're like, okay, cool. Two have rankings Miami, Clemson, blah, blah, blah. 
don't sleep on women's ACC women's hoops. This is you know your bread and butter popcorn popcorn ready every night type of vibe. If because like they basketball. know that it, they know what they need to do and actually play, you know, com- fun, convincing, watchable basketball, unlike some of the teams we have actually in the men's side. Uh, I mean, all, I mean, all guys ended off with uh, tonight, tonight, last in a uh, player of the year right now, because right now that the woman's on fire, the woman's showcasing why she was the number one shooting guard at, out of high school. So, yeah, yeah, she's definitely giving a uh, rookie of the year vibes, that's for sure. Talking through Drizzy Drake, you know, I have you here. It's only right we talk a little football. Florida State has been argued to be the best team in the ACC going into 2023. We looked Uh at the schedule. We have looked at some of the first games. Some people are going to get punched in the mouth early. Some people are going to have, you know, okay, let's test the water, see where we're at. Some people are coming out swinging. And I said, Florida State, LSU, coming out swinging. Why not? Why not on the road to national championship conversations? Do you feel that energy down in Tallahassee? The main reason why we feel that energy in Tallahassee is the amount of players that we're retaining. I want to say, like, Fabian Lovett comes back. He's someone that I almost written off as not coming back. Jordan Travis had a feeling was going to come back, but Jared Verse was the key to everything else as well. Those three now players coming back. Jordan to finna do? Now, what else Jordan finna do? Listen, man. <laughs> what If you actually watch the game, and, and trust me, I was one of those people that didn't think Jordan had the NFL quality in him, but you definitely do see he has joking. that touch on the players. I know, I know you No, are, but I, I, I have to say I'm just joking yeah. because I know how the comments finna be, and I know the tweets I'm finna get, so – I, I'm a I'm Jordan Travis fan. Y'all have converted me. I don't think this boy is going to be in the NFL be a receiver. He has some nice talents. I think he's still going to be a backup. But hey, go for it. Do your thing. Listen, I'm rooting for you. Listen, man. Brock Purdy is like killing it right now for second <laughs> support international, and I think Jordan Travis is more talented than Brock Purdy. But that's all said and dealt with that. Uh, oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah, and Jordan Travis also for Heisman. That's definitely going to be the 2023 type of thing. He's going to be going up in New York. But overall, it's the player retention is the big thing. And also, that first part of the schedule is it's not too difficult, but it definitely is a sort of a challenge starting off with LSU. But that is in Orlando. It's going to be kind of a pseudo home game for the home and home. Then you travel to Clemson at the end of the month between South, with Southern Miss and Boston College in between. But the rest of the schedule shapes out nicely for you. You have three straight home games in October with ending up with Forest. And the last pack of schedule, I think, is you have Miami at home. Then you have North Alabama at home. Then you go to Florida. This is a team that potentially, quite honestly, should be expecting at the bare minimum 10 wins. And it's mm. a team that, quite frankly, also, if they w- start off the season 3-1, and one, they have a good shot of finishing 11-1 and one by heading the AC Championship game. And you basically, at that point, we are pseudo set up for a college football playoff spot. And with talent-wise, we have that. All we need to do is consistently beef up the secondary of our defense. My, my primarily, one thing I think Ken Gibbs said a lot that he's able to see with defensive backs is that the technique and their way, I guess, they've been instructed – hasn't been that great, and we saw that it's going to be changed because former defensive backs coach that is now going to be the defensive coordinator at Arkansas, Marcus Woodson, we brought in Patrick Sertan, who you know Patrick Sertan Jr. His kid's a baller over with the Broncos. His kid was a baller at Alabama. He also was the head coach and defensive backs coach over at American Harris down here in South Florida, DBU, mm-hmm. South Florida, where we're at right now. So to me, overall, this is a team, this is a squad that expectations have not been this high since basically I, back when I was in school. Back in 2014. Look, I remember there was a time when Mike Norvell could only get seven or eight wins out of y'all. So, man, we got eight wins in two years, bro. Come on, listen. You know this. You know this. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, there was a time when everyone fired Mike Norvell. Man, I spaces. wanted to fire his ass. <laughs> we had a whole Twitter spaces about it. We had a whole, you know, issue about it. There, I remember when it wasn't too far in the back in the past when Mike Norvell wasn't the guy. Jordan Travis wasn't the guy. Now we're supposed to all buy in and just say, all right, Florida State's the team. Hey, listen. Well, it happens when you win nine games the regular season. Then you win, you know, the bowl game, you know, against Oklahoma. An Oklahoma team that actually I think is going to be pretty good for this next following season. Yeah. And it also kind of preaches to where, like, I have to remind myself that, too. You need to be patient with everything. But it also is the fact that, like I said before, the amount of players you're retaining from this previous year is insane. And also, that was a 9-1 team where Fabian Lovett missed five games. Robert Scott missed three games. Jared Verse was not 100% after injuring his leg against Louisville, which Louisville, like, listen, Scott Southfield, I don't know what you do. Every time we played your team, whatever team you had, you, you players you always get hurt for some reason. I'm not insinuating anything, but uh, I am, but I'm not. But overall, to me, with this team, if they stay fully healthy and are able to stay you know, on the track with everything, this should be an 11-win team. But you're right. This like a year ago, I wanted this man fired. I wanted this man fired. I wanted him to show the door. I wanted him to fire it at the Jacksonville State game. Do you remember that? Remember that show the week after? Oh, no. I yeah, I 100% agree. We never forget those. But I'm so, I'm over here, Clemson advocate. Wait just a damn minute. 
we're ACC champions. We definitely are gotten better at offensive coordinator. And we got Cade now who knows how to throw and do a little bit more than DJU. Relax. My own defense ain't going nowhere. Oh, but they lost Brian Brzee and a lot of people on the defensive line. I want to see what happens when those they pieces just leave. And also, they just reload, right? Oh, well, 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 they said the same about the defensive backs, and they've been, you know, okay. Same thing about the wide receivers. You know, the tight ends have been good. Well, Shipley's been good, but they didn't reload with Travis Etienne because you can't really reload with Travis Etienne. That man, that kid was a stud over here. But also, is Dabo really going to let uh, Gary Riley call what he wants to call? Is Kay Klubnik really going to be able to, you know, to run what he wants to run? So was you think DJ- Dabo is going to micromanage Gary Riley? Hot take, hot I think- take. I think Dabo, I can't I think Dabo Sweeney will micromanage whatever the hell he wants. That's my personal mm. opinion about Dabo Sweeney. I mean, mm. listen, Brent Venables, he leaves, Tony Elliott, it, it, it's, it's a pattern. And now you entire hired internally, want to try that at most. And also, is Kate Clubman going to be able to switch from not one, two, but three different, I'm sorry, two different offensive coordinators in two seasons? I think we're going to find out that DJU wasn't a problem at Clemson, in my personal Ooh. opinion. Ooh. <laughs> I love a spicy Friday. Free it's Friday, Friday, man. Listen, I'm ready. The weekend is here. We're good. We're chilling. All right. Clemson will not be Florida State in terms of if we had the ACC championship game right now. You don't think it's going to happen? Or they won't meet. No, I think they might meet. But I was like, so who else, who else are you going to think? The only team I could think of right now is UNC maybe with Drake May. But do you trust y'all's defense with that? And NC, well, you NC got rid State of- might be good. You got rid of the problem, which is Dre Bly. NC State is going to always be an eight to nine win team at this point, but can they get over the hump and win 10? Eh, we'll see. Brennan Armstrong, though. I, that's what I say. Like, Brennan Armstrong, and he's reuniting with his former offensive coordinator at Virginia, actually at NC State. I'm like, listen, the ginger assassin, that's all he needed. <laughs> that's no, sorry, all they the needed. Redheaded that, redheaded that's the assassin. assassin. That's the redheaded assassin. assassin. That's all they needed was a good quarterback. They still have MJ Morris, who has time to grow and get better. And that defense is never going to be a fluke, in my opinion, again. So, NC State, Florida State, Clemson, that'll be a fun little, you know, triple act, triple threat. But I don't really care about none of this as long as we have people in national championship conversation or a college football playoff conversation. That's what I want because I'm tired of just being the big conference that sits out, has nobody even in the running, and we're not even just – we're talking barely about New Year's Six Bowls. We're just like, ah, who wants to go to the Birmingham Bowl? Duke well, I think, I think now the way the schedule is actually setting up will actually be a lot better for that, especially because now you don't have Louisville or NC State, Florida State, Clemson beating up each other. Louisville, actually, if you look at their schedule, they can win 10 games. They can legitimately win 10 games over there. I think, And I think uh, head coach Jeff Rahm is someone that's going to bring them back to that. Miami, I need to see who they hire offensive coordinator. I'm still not as super in love with who the defensive coordinator is. But I do want to say with them, I think they're going to be a similar trajectory as Mike Norvell, whereas you can see on Twitter right now, they're defending the bad losses. They're defending the you know the close, close wins. It, it, trust me, I was there before for the past two seasons I've been to this year. But you'll have an extremely talented class coming in. The only thing you need to worry about is where or not the offense corner coming in. If Mark Cristobal, Cristobal wants to be able, hey, let's actually throw the ball a lot more with our top tier quarterback in Tyler Van Dyke, because that's probably yeah. the main reason why TVD is still there. Because if he was going to go back to the same offense he had last year, if I'm TVD, I'm too good for this nonsense, man. I'll just go over back over to SMU to Red Lashley. Hell, I definitely know there's more other power five schools I wanted as him too. So a thousand percent can't wait to get back into the full swing of football coverage it is right around the corner spring games are literally months away and then we're going to be in the thick of it so we'll have all of jersey drake's wild predictions and more but drake it's always a pleasure to have you here on the show can you please remind these folks of where they can find you follow your work Folks, you can follow me at the Twitter below if you're seeing this on YouTube. If not, you're listening at tally underscore underscore. You can follow my co-host Dave at Dave at FSU Noel. I'm not going to do the uh, joke thing because, you know, i got to get to work in a little bit. And also you can follow us at Noel Niles where we engage with our fans. We're fans first, people second, and uh, pop content creators third. As always, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Kansas. Thanks for having me on. Let me, let me be on your show on Fridays. And congrats to uh, Dre blogging his promotion now being on, on the uh, Detroit Lions staff. So shout out to you. Shout out to Kenton, who I know is probably crying at home right now after that <laughs> signage. But also, thank you guys. We're at 900 subscribers. We're on the road to 1,000. We are literally almost there. So please subscribe to the channel. We have been the little train that could on this Locked On Podcast Network, but we are standing firm and believing that y'all love this content. So please talk to us because you know we love to talk back. For Candace Cooper and Jersey Drake, have a great and safe weekend.